Hello folks, my name is Tim and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of a project build. We're actually gonna be building the Open Flexture Microscope. Now, this is a 3D printable, open source DIY microscope that's been developed by academics at Bath University here in the UK. It's a really cool project. And while I don't know a lot about microscopes, I've managed to actually capture some pretty cool looking images with this thing. And I've put a few examples at the end of the video, so we're sticking around for that. Anyway, let's get on with the build. Okay, so here we have all of the electronic components we need for this build. Now the project is built around a Raspberry Pi computer, and here I have a Raspberry Pi 3. I may swap this out for a Raspberry Pi 4 in the future, but I have a spare 3, so I'll be making use of that today. We're also going to use a Raspberry Pi camera module, and this is just the standard Raspberry Pi camera V2. Now, we'll be making some modifications to the lens of this in just a moment to make it suitable for use with our microscope. We need some illumination, and to provide that, we're just going to use a white LED along with a protective resistor. So, nothing very fancy there. Right, okay, so now we have three stepper motors, and these are just cheap 28BYJ-48 steppers, and we've actually looked at these things previously when we played around with the Raspberry Pi Pico's PIO routines. So we'll be using three of those today, and of course we need some stepper motor drivers to go along with them, and we're going to use these little ULN2003 based modules. Now, these modules and these motors are very commonly paired together, so you can probably get these as a kit. To control all of this lot, then, we're going to use an Arduino Nano, and this will be flashed with some firmware that's provided by the OpenFlexture project, so that's what will be used as our microcontroller. Now, you can actually get something called a Senga board, which basically has the Arduino and motor drivers all combined in a convenient PCB. I don't have one of those, but uh, using separate modules like this is perfectly fine, albeit a little bit more bulky. So that's it for the electronic parts. Let's take a look at the 3D printed parts next. Okay then, so for our 3D printed parts, well, first of all, we have this base piece that will just hold our Raspberry Pi computer. And on top of that, we have this piece, which is the main flexure of the microscope. And this is the part that really makes this project work. Now, unlike a fixture, which is designed to rigidly hold something in place, a flexure is designed to have a certain amount of movement in it. It's really very clever because it's kind of like a moving mechanism with no actual moving parts, or at least no independently moving parts, because this is all one single piece. And it comes off the printer, well, exactly like you see it here. So um, yeah, very, very clever indeed. Now, if we take a look at the underside of this, we can see there are three tabs. Now, by exerting force on these tabs, we cause the microscope's bed here to flex in a certain direction. I don't know if you can see that very clearly, but that bed moves in a particular direction if I press on this tab, and it moves in the other direction if I press on the other tab. So this is the X direction, and this is the Y direction. And by moving the bed about, we can scan over an entire sample and stitch together a bunch of images later. Now the middle tab here, this causes this uh, camera mounting piece here to move up and down. So this is used to focus the camera. So there we go. That's really very, very clever and a really well-designed part. Anyway, that just sits on top of the bed like so. So in addition to that, we also have this part and this part, and these combine to form the illumination support. So they just go together like so, and then they fit onto this part of the flexure like so. The camera will actually mount uh, inside of here and point upwards towards the slide. So the light will basically shine down like so. 
Now the little LED we had previously, that will just fit into this receiving hole at the top here. Now the build instructions do say we should use something called a condensing lens which fits into this receiver here. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get hold of such a lens and the build says it's optional. So we'll see how we get on without it today. Right, so what else do we have? Well, we have the camera assembly. That's these two parts here. Now it recommends that you print this in black to avoid as much light reflection as possible, though it makes it a little bit hard to record. So the base part here basically serves as a mounting plate for the Raspberry Pi camera module. And this part then goes above the camera because we need to remove the camera's lens. Let's get that, here we are. So we need to remove this lens here on the camera, turn it upside down and then insert it into the top of this 3D printed part. So it's lifted away from the surface of the camera. And that's how we convert this general purpose camera module into something that's suitable for use in a microscope. So that's again, a very clever piece. This whole project is really very, very well thought through. Anyway, there we are. That's what that's for. So we have some gear wheels here and these are used in conjunction with our stepper motors to exert forces on the flexure and make the microscope scan back and forth. Uh, these interlocking gear wheels are used as well and we should have three of those. Oh there it is. Right there we go. And then we have these three feet parts. Now these are used in conjunction with some o-rings i've got some here and they're used as kind of springs within the mechanism so the o-rings are hooked around on the back of these parts and then they fix into the flexure like so and there are three different ones they're one for the uh, x y and z axes and they are labeled so you can't get confused as to which one goes where so there's x y and Z. Right, uh, we also have this tool. Now this isn't part of the actual microscope, but it is a tool that's used to insert the O-rings uh, into these little uh, feet pieces, because it's a bit of a fiddly operation, so they provide you a custom tool to do it. And there's also, yes, this custom tool here, which is used to insert some nuts into receiving slots within the plastic parts. Now, if you had a Raspberry Pi V2 camera module like this one, then it should have come with one of these little lens adjusters. Uh, if it didn't have one of these, or if you're using the V1 camera module, which didn't come with these, then you can also 3D print a part that will do the same job. But I've got the, the one that came with my camera here, so I'll be using that. Right, okay, I think that's everything we need then. Now, you can get a full bill of materials for this from the OpenFlexure website, along with suggested suppliers. So, let's get on and build this thing. Okay, so to start with, I'm just going to clean up the plastic parts. The Flexure prints as a single part with no support material, but it does include a few bridges internally that help hold everything together as it's removed from the print bed. It's necessary to clip or snap these off so the flexure can move freely. Next I figured I'd get the tricky o-ring insertion step out of the way. That was actually a mistake. I should have inserted the actuator bolts before fixing the o-ring in place as those bolts provide support for the plastic parts. Putting the o-rings on first exerts a lot of force on the plastic and makes adding the bolts a lot more fiddly. Anyway, Lesson learned, if you're going to build your own open flexure microscope, and I highly recommend you give it a go, then it's probably a good idea to study the published assembly instructions carefully and avoid my mistakes. Anyway, with the O-rings in place, I'm now adding the actuator bolts. These bolts just thread down through a captive nut that's held in a slot just below the label on each axis. The job of these bolts is to push down on the actuator lever points in opposition to the o-rings that pull them up. This keeps the bolts under tension and eliminates any backlash in the movement. Very clever stuff.
Right, with the three actuators now assembled, it's time to build the camera assembly. I must admit, this was a little nerve-wracking. Removing the camera lens is quite a delicate thing to do, and obviously we want to ensure that no dust or debris gets into the exposed sensor. Push fitting the lens into the 3D printed tower without getting any fingerprints on it was also quite fiddly. Now the illustrations provided in the build instructions for this step were not very clear as to the orientation of the camera base in relation to its cap. So of course I fixed them together the wrong way round at first. No harm done, it was simple enough to reassemble things the correct way once I realised, however a little locating feature or some indication to show the correct orientation would be a nice thing to add in a future revision of this design, maybe something to suggest in the open flexure forums. The camera module just uses another captive nut and a bolt that fixes into the adjustable z axis mount underneath the flexure's moving stage. This movement allows the system to provide an autofocus feature by adjusting the camera's height. Tightening this bolt up, however, is a little tricky. An access path is provided just to the side of the Z-axis actuator, but it requires a long, thin Allen wrench to reach through. If you're using a screwdriver with a hex bit, then you may find it's actually too chunky to get a good angle on the bolt head. Ok, next comes the illumination tower. This just fixes to the top of the flexure using two M4 bolts with washers. The head of the tower is just attached with a sliding dovetail. If your print didn't come out with a tight fit on the slider though, you may need to use a little bit of tape to hold it in place. Time to fit the motors. I'm using a bit of tape on each motor shaft to ensure a tight fit with the smaller printed gears. Once these gears are attached, then each motor can be fixed into its receiving bracket above each actuator. The X and Y motors need to be oriented with the wires facing inwards towards the stage, and the Z axis is attached in the opposite direction. Fixing the motors is done with six M4 bolts that screw down into the bracket. Be careful not to over tighten these though, to avoid damaging the plastic. So with the flexure stage assembled, the next task is to secure the Raspberry Pi into the lower housing. Next we can connect the camera module as normal for the Raspberry Pi board using the CSI or Camera Standard Interface ribbon cable. Once everything is hooked up, then the flexure can be mounted above and held in place with four bolts. So next I'm going to directly solder the resistor to the LED and then attach a couple of wires so that we can provide power. This will then be inserted into the top of the illumination tower and held down with a little bit of tape. You could of course use some heat shrink here as well if you wanted to. Alright, so here is the final build. We have our microscope here all fully assembled and that's connected up to the three motor controllers that will be driving our stepper motors. Now I had to actually go with a slightly larger breadboard than I planned because I needed a bit more space. I've added a 5 volt external power supply via this little barrel jack here and that just goes through to the three motor controllers and to the LED here. Now the original project schematic actually wants this LED to be connected to the 5 volt supply of the Raspberry Pi but I've left it all external because I'm going to build a little enclosure just to hold all of this stuff and keep it tidy. Now for the data lines between our motor controllers and the Arduino here, well the OpenFlexture project provides a diagram that shows you how to wire those up and it's actually very very easy. And you can see that diagram here. So now that we've built the thing, let's very quickly take a look at the software side of things and then we can actually start getting some footage from our microscope and see what it can do. 
OK, so for the software side of things then, we'll first need to prepare our Arduino. To do that, we'll need some firmware that you can download from a Git repository that's linked to in the OpenFlexture documentation, and I've also added a link in the description of this video. Once you've downloaded the project, just go to Arduino Code, then Sangerboard, and you'll find an Arduino IDE project, and I've that open here. This project should build just fine without any extra libraries, and you can go ahead and flash it onto your Nano just like any other sketch. Next we'll need an operating system to put on our Raspberry Pi. For this you can just go to the download section of the OpenFlexture site and download the Raspbian OpenFlexture image. I'm using the full desktop version, but a slim version is available for older Raspberry Pi boards. Follow the instructions to write this image to an SD card and then use it to boot your Pi. Under the Next Steps section, you can find a few other interesting things, including a Python library you can use if you want to make your own scripts for running the microscope. That's pretty cool. Anyway, let's boot this up and have a look at what we get. OK, so here we are with the Open Flexture Microscope then. This is the desktop you get when you first boot up, and I've got the Raspberry Pi connected to the Arduino Nano via a USB cable, and I've also provided 5 volts to the circuitry from my desktop supply. So, everything should be ready to go. Let's go ahead and open up the Open Flexture Connect software. Now, things are a little bit sluggish on this machine because it is only a Raspberry Pi 3, so I think I will upgrade this to a Raspberry Pi 4 long term. OK, well the software's launched and it's asking if we want to connect, so let's go ahead and connect. Ah, right, OK, so it's launched something, and the first thing you'll notice is this kind of grey window here. This is... Uh, actually rendered using a, a direct GPU mechanism, which apparently has lower latency, but basically means the window isn't really a window. It's kind of stuck on top of everything else, which is a little bit inconvenient. So uh, if we move the window behind it across, you can see it's asking us if we want to do some uh, microscope calibration. So obviously that's the first thing we're going to want to do. So to calibrate the camera, we'll just click Next, and then, yeah, Lens Shading Calibration, first of all. And this should be done with no sample on the microscope. This is just with the camera itself. And we'll just click Next. This grey window is really right in the way. Anyway, we'll click Finish because it's finished calibrating. Right, OK, so if we click, let's say, Navigate, first of all. Ah, there we are. So now this uh, this window's gone at least a bit smaller so that we <laughs> it's, it's not taking up quite as much of the room on our screen. So I think what we need to do now is actually load something onto the microscope and take a look at it. OK, well, we can certainly start to see something. Let's see if we can improve the focus. Ah, so the little motor control has kicked off now, and it's adjusting the Z height in order to try and focus in a little bit better. OK, well, it looks like that's about the best we're going to get. Perhaps if I had that condenser lens in this build, we might get something a little bit clearer. But this isn't too terrible. Let's see if we can move. Ah, right, OK. So we can move in the X direction and in the Y direction. That's pretty cool. OK. 
Huh. Okay. Well, this is pretty cool, but it's not really the way you're supposed to use this microscope. The idea is that you use this capture mechanism here in order to make a series of pre-planned movements and capture a number of frames from a movement pattern. Those frames can then be stitched together into one much larger image that you can look at offline on a more powerful computer than the Raspberry Pi 3. So let's give that a go and see what we get. So once the scan's completed, we can take a look at the output footage in the gallery. Here we are, and this is our scan. Ah, and that's what we get. Okay, so it's definitely working, although this isn't perhaps the most interesting thing in the world to look at. So I'm going to shoot some footage off camera, and we'll see if we can find something a little more interesting. Mm -hmm. 